another edition of TCM Graduate TV. I'm Kenton Sepsic, registered acupuncturist. This is episode 53, and today we're doing the big, bad, heavy hitter spleen channel review. Now, there are 21 acupuncture points on the spleen channel, and I only use six of them. That's right. It simplifies things in my mind, and hopefully it does the same thing for you. However, before we continue, moving right along from our last episode of Spleen 10, I've got a couple, a couple honorable mentions, one being Spleen 15. Stomach chi is supposed to go down, so oftentimes practitioners use Stomach 25 for any constipation issues. And I know there are several practitioners out there in the world that use Spleen 15 because Spleen chi is supposed to go up, so if a patient's suffering from diarrhea, they like to switch over from that Stomach 25 to the Spleen 15. Now, because stomach 25 is the front moo collecting point of the large intestine, I use it for any digestive concerns. Doesn't matter. Because it's such a great regulator, if a patient has constipation or diarrhea, and because again, it's the front moo collecting point of this large intestine, I'm using stomach 25. I rarely use spleen 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, not so much. Very rarely, sometimes using spleen 21. Another honorable mention. We have our kind of lower division with the dimi, and we've kind of got an upper division. Whereas, moreover, the spleen 21, because it's the great lower connecting point of spleen, creates this kind of upper body, lower body division, and it's great for regulating the upper body, talking with the lower body, and vice versa. So, great lower connecting point of spleen. I'm not using this acupuncture point hardly at all. I'm the guy who's really comfortable doing stomach one, stomach nine, other danger points. However, needling shallowly in ribs kind of sketches me out a little bit. I've done it, I'll do it uh, if it need be. However, for example, if anybody has any pain in this area, I would rather cup it. So leave a message in the comments, send me a DM, let me know. Do you use Spleen 21? And if you have used it, what have you used it successfully for? Because it's one of those acupuncture points that I think gets a little bit of a write-up in a book, and I don't think it does what it says it does. Don't tell it I said that. Okay, I'm gonna erase this, and we're gonna move along to our six amazing acupuncture points on the Spleen. All right, our first amazing acupuncture point on the Spleen channel is the first one, Spleen 1. If you recall when I recorded the video on Spleen 1, we were talking about how it's great for menorrhagia, metrorrhagia, and especially menstrual flooding, and that's when I most commonly use it. So many women, and you've probably seen this in your practice, have had to have a hysterectomy. And the reason I ask, say, why did you end up having that hysterectomy? Well, I had massive bleeding. And if they only knew of you and I and how we could stop that menstrual flooding or those menopausal flooding with spleen one, and a good idea is to join liver one with it. They work really, really well together to stop that. Spleen two, unless somebody's got pain there, I'm not really using it. Spleen three and four, definitely using them. So spleen three is the earth point on the earth channel. So what it does is it tonifies spleen chi and it's a great option if you can't use spleen six because your patient is pregnant. Of course, using three and four together for any plantar fasciitis concerns. and Spleen 4 pairing with its confluent pair, PC6, for any morning sickness. PC6 opening up Yin Wei and Spleen 4 opening up Chong. Spleen 5 not really using it, Spleen 6 definitely using it. So Spleen 6 does everything 
unless your patient is pregnant, in which case it's contraindicated until the baby is considered full term at 37 weeks. Spleen 6 does a few cool two different things. The first thing it does is it tonifies spleen chi. It drains dampness. It calms the shen. And it's also indicated for any sleep concerns. One, two, three, four. Got two more to go. I'm gonna race this and we're gonna finish out our heavy hitter review. All right, spleen nine. Spleen six definitely does drain dampness, but spleen nine does a little bit better of a job. And it's also the H C point for the spleen. And if you recall, H C points affect the organ directly, so it just tells the organ, hey, regulate yourself, would ya? And last but not least is one of my favorite acupuncture points to use in clinic is Spleen 10. It does three really cool things. The first thing it does is it moves blood, so it's great for blood stagnation. Second thing it does is cools the blood. So for any skin conditions or maybe some hemorrhaging where you feel that there's heat in the blood, it's great for that. And then last but not least is it tonifies blood. Yes, spleen six nourishes yin and tonifies blood. Liver eight, the mother point is really great for tonifying blood, but this is truly a kind of uh, sea of blood acupuncture point. It does a phenomenal job. So there you go. The six amazing acupuncture points out of all 21 acupuncture points on the spleen, which are your favorite on the spleen channel. Let me know. Just want to remind you that safety is king, bedside matters king, and results are king in that order. Thank you for watching my videos. See you in the next one.